The Moscow rush hour this morning was a rush away from terror. Desperate people trying to get away from the carnage caused, authorities say, by two female suicide bombers. It was an apparently coordinated attack at the heart of the Russian security apparatus. Just before 8 this morning, one blast on a train at the Lubyanka station, directly beneath the headquarters of the FSB, the old notorious Soviet KGB. The second blast about 45 minutes later on another train at the busy Park Kulturi station. A Moscow reporter was there. And I personally saw a young woman covered with blood uh, and another was like a, so scared, so she was crying. The third one was, was talking to someone by her telephone, by her mobile phone, thanking God for her survival. And, and uh, after all that, I started realizing that I had survived myself. Blame has fallen on the militant Muslim insurgents from Chechnya in the rebellious North Caucasus region where Russia has already fought two devastating wars and where rebel groups have recently threatened to again bring their fight to Russia's cities and on their websites have paraded willing women suicide bombers known as the Black Widows. Russian leaders, including President Dmitry Medvedev, vowed again to defeat the terrorists. But Russia's heavy military response hasn't stopped the attacks. A Moscow theater audience was taken hostage and more than a hundred of them died, along with the rebels, in the rescue attempt. In the most terrible attack, more than 300 died, most of them children, at a school siege in the North Caucasus town of Beslan. The bombing of a Moscow-St. Petersburg train last year was another example of how the military response has not worked. It's the same old answers that we've heard before about smashing terrorists, eliminating them, leaving no one unpunished. The kind of arguments which are understandable in the level of frustration at the moment, but do nothing in the long term. Remarkably, the bomb subway stations were open for business again later today. The Russian leadership has long maintained that its war in the North Caucasus is over. It isn't. Katie? Mark Phillips. Mark, thanks very much for that report.